Hello, hello. How are you doing this afternoon? <laughs> Very glad that you're here with me. And welcome, welcome to our introduction to Raspberry Pi Computing and Project Ideas class. Let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Cooper. If you haven't been on one of my on-ground classes, of course, we're all staying home and staying safe right now. So we're doing all our virtual classes online for our libraries. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach for the computer, the, the Columbia County Libraries, the Evans Li the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Grove Town Library that's recently been built, yay, and of course, the Harlem Library as well. So, very glad that you're here with me today. One thing about it is we are actually on YouTube, so to be able to post a comment or a question, you do need to be logged into YouTube. And while you're logged in, please uh, hit subscribe so that you'll be up to date with all our other classes that we're teaching as well. And of course, our channel is GCHRL Videos, and you can just do a quick search on YouTube for that to be able to find that. That's kind of the easiest way to find us. So let's go ahead and the big question I usually say, well not question, I usually kind of ask, I guess you'd say, is how can I help, okay? So this class is kind of uh, made up of, we have a physical computing on ground class at the library, but of course we're all staying home, staying safe and everything. So we wanted to continue that a little bit. So hopefully that will give some good information here. And of course, we're gonna post our handout for that class and I'm gonna be doing some hands-on stuff. And a little bit, we're gonna be opening some of our mystery boxes that came. If you can listen, we got all kinds of goodies in there. And a new Raspberry Pi came in the mail and we'll get to open that and see what's all in that box as well. So we'll have uh, two openings and then we'll talk about some of the programs that we do at the library too. So, have you been working on a project with the Raspberry Pi? Have you been trying to get something to work? Maybe you had some issues with it or not? Now, let me tell you about some of our other classes. On Tuesday, we did our Scratch uh, Introduction to Basic Coding and Animation class, and that's still up, available on our YouTube channel, and the link is also available on our uh, library channel for Columbia County Library in Evans. In Harlem, uh, we did a Gadget Help Q&A with me. <laughs> hey Mac, welcome, welcome. Uh, she asked, where is the best place to buy a Raspberry Pi? Ooh, um, I'm kind of more uh, pushing towards Amazon. Of course, you can buy it directly from their website. Uh, just check the, the Amazon, and I'm a big believer in, I like the the Kana kits. I've had a few of those now, so I actually really like those. Okay, we'll talk about what's in there too. A big thing about getting a kit and not just the Raspberry Pi by itself is that you get a good power supply. So Amazon's a good source, and of course you can buy straight from their website as well. That video should still be up. We talked about uh, getting a SD card in a Samsung phone and then we also had some other questions about basically getting certified and in, in different classes like Word, Outlook, Excel and also some other coding classes too so a lot of great discussion in, in that one and we also talked about some of the library resources too and then yesterday we also did the Columbia County Library uh, uh, in Evans we did the scratch let's make a game okay so that video is still up here on YouTube and also the link is listed on the Columbia County Facebook page this morning we did Google search and internet safety basics which now includes also about scamming and by popular demand about spotting fake news and everything and of course that video is up here available on YouTube channel and it's also available on the Grovetown Library Facebook page that link is available there so this afternoon we're going to be covering this right here just a little side note here's a list of some of the other classes that we've been teaching uh, this month most of these videos are available uh, still on their Facebook pages for the different libraries and uh, the, the latter week because we've actually been um, going over transitioning over to our YouTube so everything will kind of be in one place uh, the videos are available there too 
Happy to announce our classes for next month. Can you believe it's August already? Wow. So we we'll have two new classes that we're going to be teaching. So please tell uh, your friends, family members <laughs> about that. On the fourth, we're doing a new class, Scratch to Python. It's Blocks to Coding. And we're also going to include, there's a website that uh, uses uh, Python, similar does Python similar to Blocks like in Scratch, so it's a great way to learn, and we'll be doing that on the 4th, okay? And also birding, library resources and apps next week, and we're also gonna be doing uh, that class on the 4th, and then we'll be doing it on the 5th. So the 4th is at 2.30, on the 5th is at 11 o'clock, and then we're gonna be doing a library resources class on the 6th. So just keep an eye out for that, okay? Just a little side note, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Uh, you can pick up your books. Curbside holds pickup. The librarians are working hard to do that. So please give them a big thank you for doing that. And you can check all that information out on gchrl.org for details. Or you can call into the library Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please don't forget to like our Facebook pages so you'll be up to date like our videos, like my videos, and subscribe to our YouTube. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. So any questions before we get started? Hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna post the handout in the chat. So just give me one second to get that. Have you, uh, do you have a Raspberry Pi? Have you done any projects with Raspberry Pi before? So this is our handout, what we're going to cover. And I just posted that into the chat. And let me pull up. Just the right one. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Now, the thing about this is, like I said, we usually do this in class, and then everybody has a Raspberry Pi. So, we're going to talk about our handout some, hopefully, answer any questions that you have. Ah, not yet. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm glad. So, hopefully, this is a good place to start. And, of course, I'm going to do our box opening here in just a little bit. We'll kind of walk through some of the basics here. Oh, it's gonna look a little transparent because of the light. But we'll go through some of the basics here. Here's a, a Kana kit with the Raspberry Pi 4. So definitely this is the right place to be and I'm happy to answer any questions and I've got the Raspberry Pi 3 in my hand right here. And we'll talk about what kind of projects uh, you can do, fun stuff, you can do media players, you can make arcade machines, video players, all kinds of great stuff. So let's go ahead and let's talk about what our handout kind of covers. Like I said, it's kind of a class that we do in person, uh, trying to focus on physical computing, you know, building interactive physical systems. Basically physical computers when you make the software do something and then something happens in the real world. So what exactly does that mean? Well, that really means is you program it you make the LED light blink in a certain way, and uh, then it ha something happens, a motor runs, it, it tests uh, something, it does some kind of sound, and there you go, there's your physical computing in the real world. So we'll talk about kind of an introduction to the Raspberry Pi computer, and I'll talk about the different kinds that there are. Okay, and then we'll talk about input and output. Okay, our GPIO pins. And then we'll talk about getting started with Python. So 
Hopefully with this class, you'll also take the other classes that we have, like I said, the other scratch classes. And on the fourth and the fifth, I'm gonna be doing a new class. Yay, everybody says yay, new class. Uh, getting starting, because I just finished getting the certificate for that class, but it's from scratch to Python. Uh, learning, we love Scratch, want to learn more about Python, we kind of delve into that and cover both of those. So we'll talk about writing our first Python program and I'll show that a little bit. And then we'll discover how simple circuits work, how to connect an L LED to our Raspberry Pi, how to switch your LED on and off using the code. Now like I said, mostly I'm just going to be doing a little short little demonstration here and then we'll kind of finish up talking about our different projects, okay? The goal, and this is an all-day workshop, so we'd have a morning and afternoon of this, okay? But like I said, it's in the, the handouts in the, um, uh, the chat, so you should be able to download that, and then you can do the projects on your own, or when we're, you know, not staying at home, staying safe, <laughs> we'll actually have classes, of course, in the future, eventually, at our libraries, and come join me then. Uh, also, you can do really fun things like uh, make a reflex reaction game, uh, build a whoopee cushion out of some pipe, um, some uh, paper plates, and other resources too. A big one is, in general, first attempt in learning is, it's fail. Okay, so anytime that you're starting any kind of project, realize it's probably going to fail on its first, second, maybe third attempt but don't get discouraged because the first attempt in learning is usually failure okay so let's talk about what we need and i'll kind of disappear a little bit let's talk about what we need well first we need a raspberry pi don't we yes we do raspberry pi is a, a little 35 dollar computer uh, this is one that i actually have a picture of let me zoom in here so it's a little bit closer It's a little $35 computer that it starts with it. Now, the newer Raspberry Pi 4, and let me show that real quick. The Raspberry Pi 4 actually has three different types, and this is from their website. So this is the four, and that's what we're going to unbox here in just a second. So we have different types. So where is my thing here? Do I click? There we go. There's products. So this is the newer model here. Uh, there's actually three models. I'll be talking about the four. Uh, um, uh, I'll be talking about the four gigabyte version of it. Okay. <laughs> I won't get into the rest of the little stuff. Uh, they have all these like little accessories. I do recommend kind of from the start to basically get something that um, has everything in it, kind of like our Kana kit that I'm going to open. Here's the, all the different kinds of models out there. Don't let it get confused too much. You want to mainly focus on the one that's the latest one because they almost cost about the same, th same price. Um, if you get the cheaper one, it has less RAM. If you get the 4 gig like I have here, it costs a little more, and they actually have a 8 gig one, I believe, and there's really, really small ones too. But I mainly focus on the main ones and try to get the latest one that you can. It'll just kind of help out with projects and stuff. All right, so let's go ahead, and I'm going to see if my trick will work here.
Okay, does that sound better? <laughs> Thank you, sorry about that. When I actually switched over to the other camera, it didn't have the sound on, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm back. It happens. All right, so all kinds of stuff. And this is one of the things I was interested in in this project, is this actually a RFID scanner. Let me see if I can hold that up a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. All right, so that would be an interesting project too. And let's look and see. We got some male female cables, okay, which is what we're going to deal with today. We also have some male to male as well. And then we have our, which would be these are male to male. These are kind of short actually. Let's see. <laughs> All right, so we have our LEDs in here. We've got our small little push button. See if you can hear that. We also have our resistors. And we should have our 331. And we have more buttons, okay? There's our LEDs and there's our buttons. Got a whole bunch of neat things in here. Ah. We got our breadboard, and also we have something to give us power for our projects, okay? So, really, really fun, really, really exciting. We've got our little motors in here, too. Let's see. I think this was like a Sonic. I'm trying to remember exactly everything in the box. That's funny. And we have our little analog joystick in there too, if you can see that. That I'm very excited about working with. I think that would be a fun, I haven't worked with that at all. Okay, so we've got our wires. Got our wires for our project. And we need our LEDs. There we go. Okay, now Oh, that's going to be so cool. Ah, there you go. Uh, in class, we actually have it's like a little plate that fits on top of the GPIO pins. That we connect to so this actually allows you to connect up to to a ribbon cable be able to do it a different way okay so LEDs we have our breadboard on there I have a breadboard that's empty so I'm gonna actually grab that it's our empty breadboard all right a lot of stuff for 40 bucks so that's pretty good and I will set that to the side for now all right now let's talk about our next section let's talk about getting started with Python to begin with, okay? And then we'll come back to our Raspberry Pi and connect stuff up, okay? So I'm gonna disappear so y'all can see everything on the screen. All right, so let's talk about getting started with Python, okay? So computers need instructions to be of any use. Without instructions, they are just expensive, or in the Raspberry Pi case, inexpensive lumps of plastic and metal. We can write these instructions using uh, a programming language, one of the easiest text-based languages to learn is Python. Just because Python is easy to learn doesn't mean it isn't powerful, however. Okay, so the big thing we're going to do is we're going to use the shell 
And I actually have the Python installed on my computer. And I will show that site real quick. It's python.org. And like I said before, this actually comes pre-installed um, with most of our kits that have it. It's the Raspbian. They just recently named the operating system something else. Um, but I could look that up to find out what that is. But uh, there you go right there. And you can download it from here. Now, when we actually install the one in Windows, it's actually going to have both, both versions in it. It's going to have Python 2 and Python 3. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to open up our Python here. All right, so here's our Python shell, okay? Now, this is where we directly type code, okay? It'll be here directly. So, and that's how we get our code to run, okay? So, let's go ahead and talk about this. Now, we got it to run. Now, if you're using the, uh, like I said, Raspbian or the latest version of the OS that comes with uh, on the Raspberry Pi website, you can actually get that as burned as an image. They have all those instructions on there, how to put it on a flash drive, uh, excuse me, SD card if you don't have one. It's our little SD card that goes in here on the side of our Raspberry Pi. Uh, basically, you click the Raspberry Pi button click on the le top left we click programming and we click python 3 okay all our coding that i have in the handout is all based on python 3 okay now the ied is what you'll be clicking on you'll also see things these chevrons which are kind of like the alligator greater than greater than greater than okay and that's what pops up first so you see that here you see our shell greater than greater than greater than those will stay there in a little bit we'll talk about how to have another window open so that you can save any of your projects as a file name and reopen them later okay so our biggest thing is let's go ahead and do python and our first project is we're going to do print uh, open parentheses and it doesn't matter if it's a quote mark or the other symbol i'm blanking on what the other symbol is um, I am writing Python, uh, uh, print, uh, excuse me, quote, and then close parentheses and hit enter. And then on the screen, it should do the similar thing that we're all expecting to do when we first do coding is the hello world. Okay, but we're doing, I'm writing Python. So let's go ahead and do that together. So I'm going to do print, open parentheses, okay. I am writing Python. Okay. And then boom, we hit enter and it shows up on the screen. Now, I'm a big believer of project based. So if you were able to do that, if you were able to install the software, um, like I said, one of the big things about this being a video is you can pause it too. <laughs> um, go in and then you can actually type in anything you want. And the classic thing of saying hello world. And he's spelled world right. hit enter and there you go okay we can also get Python to do math a little bit so if we do 6 plus 6 and hit enter that will actually come up and do our math as well okay now let's go ahead and let's talk about our editor all right now what we've done is our shell okay we can write a few lines of code there's even places that you can 
uh, you know, this is the shell is actually what's going to write the code, run the, excuse me, run the code when we actually um, load it, okay? When we actually tell it to run, it runs in the shell, even though we still have uh, the, uh, the editor open. So how do we open up a new Windows to have it separate so that we can write something? Well, let's do file and hit new file. And then this will pop up and we have a new window, okay? So this is where we can type in our code. We can also save our code and we can open files by doing file open here, open our file later and then run it later, okay? Pretty similar to Word, okay? So you have Word here, you can do file and then hit print that way. All right, so we're gonna come back to that. Let's go ahead and let's talk about our Raspberry Pi GPIO pins, okay? So repeat after me, general purpose, input, output. General purpose, input, output, there you go. So GPIO pins mean general purpose, input, output pins, okay? This way we can turn things off, we can give things power, we can control things, now it doesn't actually show it on the board. This is the kind of things that we actually have at the library that we put on, okay? It doesn't actually show um, the, what the GPI can stand for. We either have to look it up and have a guide like this, or like I said with the new kit, it's actually something you connect in and then you put it someplace else too, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about our functions of our GPIO port, okay? So if you don't have a pin uh, label guide, then it's a good idea to have something similar to this. There's really four different um, ports, okay? Or pins, I should say. There's one that's a 3V3, which is a three volts of power, okay? And then we actually have one that's five volts of power, okay? Five volts, five volts, there's the ground, GND, ground, and the rest of them are GP something. So they'll say GP number this, GP number that, okay? Uh, this actually lists, lists the, uh, where the project is on the Raspberry Pi website too. Okay, so we kind of got that going on. Let's go ahead to our next part. Let's talk about input output, okay? So a big one is, and I'm gonna go ahead. Hey, I'm back, okay. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna get my Raspberry Pi, excuse me, my LED out of here. Resistor. Let's see which one it is. Not the three hundred thirty one. Okay, so. Okay, it's a little bit of a color coordinated little card here too, it says. I think these are two actually. Anyway, so we have our LED right here. The big thing about an LED is that it actually has two legs and one leg is shorter than the other one, okay? Some of the LEDs, on the, if you looked at it from above, let's see how close I can get that here and it's still being focused. If you look at it from above, it may have a little bit of like a little cut, but some of them are cheap and they don't have that. So let's talk about kind of how our electricity flows. Now, I won't go into that there's a bunch of different theories about electricity flowing a different way because uh, uh, that may be true, <laughs> but 
For example, it could be confusing, so we won't discuss the, the theories and figuring that out. So basically, we have our power, okay? We have our double A, triple, excuse me, triple A battery, and our power uh, flows, the plus or positive goes to the long leg, okay, our long leg, and then it goes into our resistor, okay, and then it goes into a switch. Something like this, for like if it's an arcade, some kind of button, is what we have on here. Okay, so, and then it goes back up to ground. So just kind of main, main thing to remember here is that it's flowing one way, but it always has to go back to ground. So it always has to reconnect to our ground connection. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to use my breadboard. So have you ever used a breadboard before? No, you haven't. Okay. Well, one of the things about our wires are, well, let me scroll down. Let me finish talking about our buttons here. And we also have our button. Let me grab one of them. Great sound. And our buttons actually have little hats on top. Okay, very good. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I don't have it set up so you can see an output from our Raspberry Pi, but we can use this to set it up to do our, uh, the light up our LED. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do our wires first. I'll set a little extra stuff. So we've got our breadboard. Yeah, it's a breadboard. We got our wires now. A big one is, and I'll I'll hear students talk about. Uh, does the color of the wire matter? Actually, it does not matter what the color of the wire is. Okay, it's just mostly for us. A big thing about our button is it's on or off, on or off, closed or open. Now let's look at our breadboard. So we have our breadboard here. Hold it this way, so you can kind of see the. The way it connects and they also can connect more than one as well but when we look at our breadboard we need to realize that and I'm gonna hold it just ooh, that's perfect hold it just like it is in our little screen there so we actually have our rows okay our rows and I'm gonna take our wires apart here we have our rows so to make sure that these two wires are connected to each other, we just have to make sure that it's on the same row, okay? That the wire is on the same row. And the reason that is, is because when we actually look at our handout here, we actually have it where uh, we can see that there's the rows that go this way to connect them together with the bars underneath. And we have our rails that go along the sides of our um, breadboard here. We won't be using that in the project today, but mostly we just need to connect them together. Now, one of the things we may notice is that the middle, what I call the river, okay, the middle inside, the middle part of the breadboard or the river part does not connect to anything, okay. In a minute, we're going to do our, our LED and put it on one side of the river and the legs on the other side of the river, okay? I know that's my term. It's the river. A guy kind of standing on, uh, you know, each side of the river. That's kind of the idea I was coming up with. Okay, so let's talk about lighting our LED. Like I said, I won't have, don't actually have it connected up to our Raspberry Pi, so you can't see output to it. 
but we will be able to light up our LED and I'll talk about some of the other projects we can do as well. Okay, so basically it comes up and we have our LED, we have our resistor, and first we're going to do a very simple circuit, okay? First we're going to see if there's actual power. So let me get my LED. I need it to be long leg to short leg. And I'm going to put it near the top here. I'm going to bend it a little bit. Long leg, short leg. And we're actually going to get our resistor. We're going to make sure our resistor is on the same row. Okay, and we're going to bend our resistor eh, maybe down here to uh, see how I can go here. It's to 19, it's not stretching fully to 20. Okay, the big thing is I don't have to jam it all the way in. I've had students that'll take their finger and they really start to just cram it down there. You really don't have to, it just kind of has to touch the bottom, okay? Now, I actually need, we're gonna do a little bit of extra here. Well, I'll do this and then we'll do our button, okay? So we've got our male to female. And remember, we want it to be on the row. So we put it on the same row, okay? And remember first, the, what is it? the first part of learning is fail. So then I get it and I put it right there. Let's get our Raspberry Pi. Okay. And if we go, hold on, we got to go back up. Let's look at our GPIO pin list. So let's look at the GPIO pins on our Raspberry Pi. And the best way to kind of do this is to kind of think about it as holding the um, holding them with the USB down. Okay, that really is the best way. So top to bottom. So the top left is our three volts, and the third on the right is our ground. So that's the two that we're going to use right now. Now we need our electricity. Went the wrong way. We need our electricity to flow one way. Okay, long leg, short leg, resistor, touching, and then our battery, which is actually going to be our Raspberry Pi. And now we'll deal with our buttons here in just a second. Okay, so that's kind of what we're going towards right now. Plugging the LED into the three volts of power, and then pr pressing the where the resistor comes out to the ground. All right, so. Let's go ahead and connect it together. So the three down. And then top left. Now this is technically not physical computing yet because we're just actually just giving it a power source. Okay. Yay! And then there's our LED light came on. Okay. <laughs> you got it. All right, so let's go ahead and we know our circuit is working. Now usually we would go ahead and then take our our, um, our three volts of power and plug it into our GP17 pin, but I'm going to go ahead and mess with our button a little bit, okay? All right, so I'm going to unplug it. I will actually unplug our Raspberry Pi as well. And the big thing with our buttons are that they have small little teeth, okay? And you would think you would put one on one side and one on the other. You actually don't do that. You actually put it on both sides, okay? One here, one here, press the button, and then they, they connect. 
So I'm actually going to take, and I should be able to line it up on the same row here, and that will save me an extra wire. Put it on the row. You'll see that it's not going all the way in, and I push it a little bit harder. And hopefully you heard that. And now we actually have our, our clicky button. <laughs> okay, now. Got our male to female here. I'm gonna put it down here. And as long as I have it on the same row, we plug back in. And then I press the button. There we go. So here's our first controlled circuit that we can do very quickly and very easily. Okay. We'll send Mars code. I don't know Mars code, but it sounded important to me. Okay, so did you like that? Okay, so blink, blink, blink. Okay. <laughs> so one of the things is you we would do is we would take this wire, and then of course without the button because the, uh, the button is a little bit extra plug that in to our GPIO 17 and then we would come down here and do our Python code and this time we would first start off by doing it in the shell okay so we start off and one of the things I do mo we get all ages um, when we do this at the library uh, we do get a lot of young folks too that come out and a lot of folks that just want to know a little bit more about the Raspberry Pi coding Maybe they've gotten one, maybe they've done some projects with it, but they want to be able to do it a little bit more too. So we kind of start off with doing our Raspberry or Python, putting in our Python. We kind of uh, barely kind of talk about what the specifics are of it, mainly just talking about this being, you know, like the library, pulling from the library, GPIO0, import LED. And then we have LED equals LED and 17. Remember I told you that we need to put it on GP17. That means that it hooks up to this 17 here and that just tells the computer that it's on LED 17, okay? Then we'd actually go and we would type this. So this is just putting it in the shell to begin with. So we type that there, type the next line and then we would type in LED.ON, open parentheses, close parentheses, hit enter and it should turn the LED light on, okay? Then, to turn it off, we do LED.OFF, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then that will turn our LED light off, okay? And then boom, guess what? You've just done physical computing, okay? So our next project that we would do is we would actually talk about time and sleep libraries, okay? The neat part about this is not only are we dealing with saving our projects, but we're also now getting a little bit more into it and we're talking about loops. So this part of our library pulls up and is pulling a GPIO zero import LED. So we have our LED light, okay? And then we have from time import sleep, okay? And then we have LED putting it GPIO 17 Remember, you can put it on any GPIO. Uh, there you go, right there. And our while true actually makes it a loop. Okay. The reason I actually made, created this, made it a loop, the basic one is not a loop because a lot of the kids in there were like, well, we want it to, to keep going and going and going. It's like, okay, well, we need to make a loop. A big thing about the while true loop is that the T needs to be capitalized. And because you're typing while true, this should then start indenting it, need to indent it. And then we talk about the way coding works. So first we have LED on. It's going to go, it's going to read sleep. The computer's going to go to sleep for a second. LED off, LED on. So also I let the, tell the kids, I say, hey, why don't you change the time? Why don't you make it longer? Why don't you make it shorter? Usually they try to make it shorter 
like 0.5 or something, half a second, and then all of a sudden it's over there blinking like crazy, okay? Okay? So that's a big project right there. One thing is when we're doing the pro, and I have it down here talking about making the sleep less. Uh, one of the things is when you want to exit, you should do control C if it's still running the program uh, like in a loop, okay? Like this is in a loop, you need to do control C to exit, okay? Now our next project is actually setting it up so that it has a, it's connected to a button, okay? Uh, mostly that's so that we can do a quick time game, okay? So we have our input, we connect our wires, we told you it needs to be on the same side with our button here. The wire comes out, goes to GPIO4, and then the other one needs to go to ground, okay? This one doesn't matter as much about which one goes to where. We save our file, we run our file. Excuse me, I forgot to, to, to do a part. So you type it in your code in here. You go up here, you click run, run module. It'll say you need to save your module, okay? And when I give it a name, it'll run it in the shell, okay? Which the shell was uh, this right here in our shell here. So if we actually did, I can do that. So instead of it being uh, typing in plus plus here, if I type in six plus six, and then I go run, I actually have to make sure that I save the program I'll just call it math. Just like if I was in Word, save, and then it'll run it and then give us the time. So there you go right there. Okay, so give us the time, give us the math. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you come in here, create this. This is for our button. And all we really do is we have it set up here. So now we've imported a button and the button 4 means it's on the GPIO4, okay? Now, the point of this is, remember we did print screen, okay? Well, the print screen's still going on, and now it actually says, uh, push me, okay? You pushed me. So the idea is when you actually have your button set up, then when you press the button on the screen, it'll say, you pushed me, and then usually I get the kids to write something. I tell them, don't write anything bad. I said, but write something different so you better have understanding of the code, okay? Also, we have our manual control of our LED. This is one where uh, we're typing it, waiting for the press. I hit the press. The LED light will turn on for three seconds and then turn off. And that's what this lesson does. Okay. So we're all kind of connecting it together, going to the next step, including the next steps as well. Now we also talk about adding a while true. Okay. To make it uh, one press, it does it, and then it'll continue to do it. Now this is one that's really popular. They really like this game. So we have our import. We're also going to import from the library time, sleeped, randent, and this actually is going to be randon, okay? Random, excuse me, random. So what exactly is that going to do for us? Well, we actually go through our different steps here. Click include our button four, LEDs on 17. There's button four, there's our button. And then we have LED 17. And basically what this does is we first try this to run our code to make sure that our LED light is coming on like it's supposed to. And then we delete this code and we make our game. And this is the full code for our game and I'll tell you what our game does. So first we have import from our GPIO0 library. It imports the button, it imports LED. From the time library, it imports sleep. From the random library, it imports randent or random. If you want to remember it that way, here's our LED is connected to GPIO 17. 
The button is connected to the GPI 04, and then we have a loop that'll keep going. So it comes up and it says, between one to uh, 10 seconds, we want it to sleep, and then we want it to come on. So it's a little bit backwards way of thinking, isn't it? Because we want it to go to sleep, and then we want it to come back on. So then we have our start time. Now remember the time that we imported here. What's our time going to do? Well, it's actually going to put it, it's going to wait for the button press, and then it ends the time. Okay? So when the LED light comes on, it's going to start the timer. When we press the button, it's going to end the timer. The LED light will turn off, and it's going to print in time on the screen. So basically, it's a, a reaction time game you have the LED light come on they press the button as fast as they can and then it'll have a printout on the screen saying how much code uh, how much how, how quickly it was that you press the button okay now here's another one here to see if you can make it blink any quicker okay so you'll basically have a time that if you missed it'll record that you didn't press the button in time either okay this is just having it come on. Adding this makes it come on for like less than a second or half a second. Now another project we'll do, uh, a lot of the times this really encourages little bits. This is kind of a classic Raspberry Pi uh, project. Basically it's making a whoopee cushion. Okay. So how do we do our whoopee cushion? Well we have two pie plates, okay, or two plates I should say. And we actually put them together. And let me let me go grab that. Give me one second. So we actually have our pie plates here, and I'll hold it underneath here. And we basically, these have been used. <laughs> um, and some of this can just be a quick trip to the dollar store. So we basically have we have our glue stick, which is a good idea. We have our, our tin foil glued to the bottom of our plates. And what you want to do is you want to make it so the lip is sticking out the side. Okay. So we've got our glue sticks, glue that in. This can be for littler kids, littler, smaller kids, I should say. Uh, if you want the project to be done more than once, you need to make sure that you put some sponges in here or just cut up some sponges again. Use the uh, glue stick to put it in. Now, I don't have a, it with me, but you can get some alligator clips. Clip here, and then when your wires are sticking out, you actually use that, excuse me, you actually use that on here, and then Clip those here so you can make your wires a little bit longer as well. The big thing is to make the lip stick out the sides. So when you glue it, when you tape it together, you have the tin foil sticking out this side, tin foil sticking out this side. So the only time that the circuit is actually complete is when someone sits on it and the uh, the bottom of the the bottom of the plate uh, tin foil touches and that closes our circuit. Okay, so making sure the lip sticking out at different sides and it's not touching automatically. Okay, that's a great fun project. All kinds of different ages uh, will do that, but that's kind of geared more towards our little bits. Okay, so our our code for that here's our alligator clips, kind of programmed to connect up this way, click there, clip there, 
and it actually recommends a GPIO2. Remember, it can be any ground, and it doesn't matter which one you plug it into because we're just closing the circuit. And this is our this is a program code that's straight from the Raspberry Pi website. Okay, so import OS, import random, okay, from time, import sleep, from GPIO0, import button, okay. We have our button, which is GPIO02. Now, the Raspberry Pi does not come with a sound card. <laughs> no, excuse me, the Raspberry Pi does not count, come with the speaker plugged in. So I actually had two uh, ways of doing this. I'm very glad to say that uh, during our stay at home we actually did get some uh, speakers so in future classes whenever that happens future classes will actually have some speakers to do our little funny noises with and also our little uh, keyboard that will make uh, music with uh, we'll be able to use that as well okay so I actually came up with a different way of doing this and the way that we do this is basically to have uh, sounds happen up on the screen okay so that's what this code does it makes a variable so that it actually makes it random about which one uh, that they say uh, up on the screen okay so we have our gas effects and let me let me move that because that's kind of in the way right now we have our gas effects we also have our wild true going on talks about our u random choice a variable a and then here's our full code here um, you know not too too difficult for younger ages to be able to do this we mostly just type in it one of the big drawbacks is getting them to actually uh, you know be coding by hand um, in a future class we'll see if we might be able to use the one that's kind of like a Lego blocks we'll see how far some of that coding can go um, but typing it in Going back, checking it is a great exercise to make sure our code is right. Um, I will tell you one drawback that I've had is that because uh, the Raspberry Pi is a UK uh, device um, made in the UK, that it had a, it was programmed for a UK keyboard. So if you are having problems with the Raspberry Pi hitting keys and it's not coming up <laughs> the right key. You may actually have it set to UK and you're using a United States keyboard. Not 100% sure why that is. Just go to the settings in the, the Raspbian or whatever it's called now and then change it to a US keyboard and you should be good to go. Okay, and then it'll start working. But I've actually had that happen in class and actually had it where uh, one student uh, changed, changed the settings. I don't really know what it was. I actually had to reflash the um, SD card uh, to get them back to where we were <laughs> which is kind of strange and some of this you may not know what it is um, and it may look proper if it looks proper and it's not working then I recommend to start over okay so what's going on input imported random imported time uh, sleep imported from the GPIO zero library button Here's your button, here's your uh, loop, while true, while true, while true. Button weight press, so it's waiting for our whoopee cushion uh, to be pressed. And then it's gonna say a variable, which is right here. Here's your variable, one of these. And it's print u, random choice. And this is a double um, closed parentheses. So if you're doing this at, at home with uh, little bits or just family, or you're doing this yourself to try to you know know a little bit more I uh, do realize that it, the code if you see a capital letter somewhere you need to put a capital letter okay it can be very specific about uh, what's it gonna what's it want so and then it uh, makes it sleep for two seconds and then you can press the whoopee cushion again and it'll do the same thing so that's what the while true uh, will do is keep going around and around waiting for the button press okay Make sure you check for errors and stuff. Okay, so I know that was just kind of a uh, long-winded kind of walkthrough, you know, our handout and stuff. But now let's talk about some other projects that we can do as well. And I'm actually gonna go to the Raspberry Pi and I'll tell you about projects I've uh, worked on myself, okay?
So basically the Raspberry Pi website and we can do browse all projects and I want to go to the one that says Raspberry Pi for right now. So some of these projects do require you to have more than what's just in our little kit like there's a, a robot here usually it'll tell you exactly what you'll need okay there is one that I want to particularly talk about is our little music player box here's a whole getting started about the Raspberry Pi oh definitely ask me if you have any questions so far so this is a GPIO music box I more or less call this uh, not really a music box more like a um, I'll remember what it's called in a minute but basically you give it what sound you want it to play and you press the button so here they've got a very small um, it's smaller than the bread uh, board that I have uh, here they've wired the wires up to the separate GPIO pins and we have plans on doing this um, in a future class because we have ordered more buttons than they came and we have our sound cards so this is kind of one of my ideas to do things in the future okay so I'm actually going to let this play and I will disappear for a minute Kind of fun so the idea of this project is you're making four buttons and I actually was available able to get a hold of uh, some sound files that not only are just silly noises or sounds but they're also um, uh, scale proper I guess with the piano so it is making like a little bit of a piano do 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 and then you can actually use it as an actual musical instrument okay so that's just kind of one thing to play around with an idea so if you have a kit like the one that came today and a bunch of buttons that's something that you could do okay today you're going to wire buttons to your Raspberry Pi and use Python to make a sound machine <laughs> Project, you will need a Raspberry Pi, a breadboard, some buttons, and some male to male and male to female jumper cables. A Raspberry Pi has 26 GPIO pins. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. These pins allow you to send and receive on off signals to and from electronic components like LEDs, motors, and buttons. Each pin has a number. And there are additional pins that provide 3.3 volts, 5 volts. So she's going through the whole project. You can click here and go to the next part. It talks about the music box and everything and how to set that up with your samples, what folder the samples need to be in. And, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting. And if you need to convert sounds from different, like MP3, uh, it tells you how to do that as well. Oh, good. Uh, Jane, I'm glad you like that. It's a neat little uh, project. One thing I really like about it too is you don't have to have it connected to a screen. So actually it's something that you could just, you know, have made, plug in the Raspberry Pi and uh, there you go. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna talk about uh, what's in our box, okay? So let me get our zippers here. And we'll turn off our Raspberry Pi here. Do, 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 do. Undo our wires. Oh, everybody says, oh. All right, so let's look and see what's in our Kana kit. Uh, this is a kit I got off Amazon. I want to talk about the price because the you know prices vary. Depending on uh, what's on sale, I guess. So this is a four gig RAM one. 
and it's a good thing about it is of course it has the uh, power supply that comes with it it's got a case that comes with it it has a 32 gig uh, memory card that comes with it as well now the previous one that I got the previous one that's on the the video it actually has uh, some more cables that came with it but I didn't really need that this time so it was actually uh, less price <laughs> about 20 bucks so we have our readme first we also have guess what a little bit of a if you can see that it's actually a gpio pin um, list that's on there for the different projects if we go to cana kit they actually have some of the projects too now this raspberry pi compared to our other one this Raspberry Pi, the original, the three one, has a normal HDMI output, okay? The new Raspberry Pi actually uses um, mini, yeah, mini HDMI uh, plug here and has the output here as well. So here's our power supply, which we will need. And now instead of using micro SD, it's actually using uh, USB-C okay so again the big one is we're dealing with a little computer I recommend not just using like a cell phone charger or something you really should make sure that your device is getting enough power as it should or it could lead to failure so here are the little heat sink sticker heat, heat sinks of course I have it on our three and there's one more because it needs three it's our power supply, USB-C, so I'll set that apart. One thing, and I'm not pointing out too much going on, but I do remember, uh, I don't know the exact date or time it was, but there was a time of maybe a year, maybe two years ago, a year and a half, something like that, uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation came out and said there would not be a Raspberry Pi 4. They felt like it was going to get too hot. Raspberry Pi 3 was doing great, okay? And of course, now here we are. <laughs> One of the things is Raspberry Pi 4 can get very hot. Okay. They say you do need to make sure that you have some kind of fan with it. The old Raspberry Pi 3 is not as hot. So it can actually do pretty well with just, I won't talk about what overclocking is, but you can actually get it to run faster than it's supposed to, overclocking. Um, but I don't really get into that too much because I want the device to last as long as it can, of course, even if it's a cheap little device. So well, with these, they do recommend having a, some kind of fan um, with them. If, you're, if your device is overheating in some way, on the top right, you'll all of a sudden get a little um, temperature gauge and also you'll get like a little lightning bolt, meaning if it's not getting enough power. But you need to make sure you get one that has a fan in it, okay? I've done many projects where the three or even the one and the two, I had, I never had a two. I had two ones and uh, the three, uh, some, some things never even had a case for it. Um, but yeah, you should get a case because then you can actually get a fan and stuff. Here's our micro SD card. And here's our case. It's a black case and it should look pretty similar. This is a Kena, no, this is a uh, uh, Bill Ross case, okay? But this one should look similar to another uh, Kena one that I have uh, as well, okay? Can you use the old case? No, you can't because the, the new Kena has the two H, the micro, excuse me, the mini HDMI out, okay? So let's look at our other part of our handout here. We have a quick getting started guide and the fun thing about it is it even talks about the different parts of the Raspberry Pi 4 as well and, point, and point, uh, points them out um, as well. It also explains how to get, uh, it talks about the GPIO pins because we need to plug our fan into the GPIO pin so it gets power similar to what we did with our LED. And it actually has two settings. So you could actually plug it into the 3 volt or the 3V3 
where the 5 volt as well it makes the fan faster I've played the 5 volt and it talked about it being loud I don't hear it being loud either it's a quality fan or I just can't hear it I'm actually using it as a media player on my TV and we'll talk about that in just a minute here's about installing the operating system and remember I told you about not enough power they're actually showing that in the handout right here so it's a nice quality handout talks about using the software the operating system talks about electronic stuff using Python and look it even has some projects in there and one of the projects we we're talking about doing a blinking LED and connecting up our LED with our button. So we are right on target. And here's another list. And it actually has a list of their own private uh, projects there as well. Okay. Okay. And there's our troubleshooting. So let's set that back here. This is actually an interesting, um, it's a for the micro SD card to plug it in USB. One thing that uh, kind of blows my mind, because this is the second one like this that I have, the micro SD, uh, the USB part, it actually plugs into the USB part instead of plugging in the back somewhere. So it kind of blows my mind still, that's how that works. So let's go ahead and let's look at our Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, and we'll compare the two. Our nice little box here. Sorry, I don't have any screens to take uh, uh, stickers off of. So there's our little Raspberry Pi 4. Yay. Got some more information in there. So we hold them together. Yay, they're together. All right, so we have our four. We have our um, Ethernet cable. Look, it's on the other side. Interesting. We have four USB ports here. We have four USB plugs, but two of them are the USB 4. I mean, excuse me, USB 3, excuse me, because they're blue, okay? Now, we look at our top part here. We actually have, this is why our cases won't work. We have our main size uh, HDMI out. We have our mini HDMI, mini HDMI, and here's our micro SD uh, plug. No, my, micro, bleh. Uh Here's our USB-C, okay? So here's our micro, uh, excuse me, USB-C plug there for our power, and of course here's for our headphone jack as well, okay? We have the same pins with our GPIO0, so the same projects can be used for this that can be used for that, okay? Which is a big plus. We're not reinventing the wheel um, for our different projects, okay? All right, so any questions about that? And Mr. US um, version four is gonna go back in the box. So overall, I think this is a really good kit. And we also have the switcher. You may or may not know that the Raspberry Pi, unless you unplug it from the wall, cannot actually turn itself off. It can go into a shutdown mode, but it'll still use power. And if you want, if you're concerned about it being on and off, lovely sound. Um, we can actually have it so uh, the power of the USB-C plugs into here. I plug this into the device and then I do have an on and off switch. So that's a big plus for this kit as well. In case you don't want to leave it on all the time like a media um, you know, media player or something like that. Of course, ugh, now I have to remember how everything goes back in the box, which I won't do well. Close enough, right? All right, so now that we know what's in our Kana kit, let's go ahead and let's talk about other projects we can do as well. So, have you done, have you done, have you tried any other projects? Okay. Well, 
want to go to <laughs> I just want to go to the main page. So here we are right here. Uh, it really is a learning device. Let me let me go back to our main area. There we go. It really is a learning device where we have our LEDs and everything up here as well. We have our all different kind of projects. Learning at home we have going on. We also have things like code clubs. They have uh, magazines. They'll give some of these. They'll give out free issues of it. You just have to check the website. All kinds of different projects. Scratch stuff is on here as well. It's kind of broken up into that. Uh, websites. Uh, excuse me. Um, Python building a website, and they really have a big mission. Now I know there's a bunch of other little uh, computers out there. Arduino stuff like that. I haven't actually had an Arduino. I had a friend that had one that really liked his, but I like that there's such a big backing and a big focus on education with the Raspberry Pi. I've gotten, uh, I've done three of their programs. I've finished two of those with the training and gotten certified, and I've really enjoyed it. So let's go ahead and let's talk about some of our other resources. And then I'll point out. Uh, future learners where you can learn some of the other stuff there's our also our making it into a retro pie gaming system okay I won't talk about where to get the the games or anything like that that'll be up to you <laughs> but this is retro pie there's lots of homebrew games as well and the big thing about this is it's free you download it you load um, the ROMs in there um, for legality it should be ROMs that you already own if you have a box of old Super Nintendo NES games somewhere um, you can have backup copies of that and play games as well okay Genesis lots of old systems here Game Boy Advance it has a nice picture there and the great part about it is that they now do support the Raspberry Pi 4 I held off on buying um, this is my second Raspberry Pi 4 I've held off on buying a Raspberry Pi 4 because I did I didn't want it to um, I knew it wouldn't do right some of the stuff I want to do yet so I just held off and even thinking they might uh, update it in some way I've actually heard some issues with uh, the power to the Raspberry Pi so that's again why I'm pushing to make sure uh, something about if you use the the plug in the wrong power supply it would do something Again, that's why I'm focusing on making sure that I get a, uh, not official, but a proper power supply to the device because I don't want its power to run out or anything like that. Or run low in power, which could damage your device. Okay, so we talked about that. That'll actually get you started. This is an operating system. So you would download this. It'll ask you which Raspberry Pi you have. Okay, click it, download it. And again, it'll actually give instructions on how you put it and burn it as an image file to your memory card. Okay. Uh, you have to load all the other games and stuff separate. They don't host any games or anything like that or ROM files. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go to one of our next projects. So you say, okay, is there a way that I can basically rip all the DVDs or even if you do have a Blu-ray uh, ripper reader at your house, is there a way that I can do that or play home videos uh, that I've recorded on one kind of device? Yes, you can, but do you want there to be a, a Windows computer plugged into your TV all day? Well, you can do the same things with a small little uh, Raspberry Pi as well, okay? So basically, Cody.tv uh, is where you go. Cody's completely free. Cody can also get a bad rap because there's certain add-ons that uh, will allow you to watch illegal um, bootleg movies and stuff like that. I don't get into that. I don't do that. I don't talk about that <laughs> because you definitely don't want to get in trouble. 
or in trouble, especially in trouble with um, your internet service provider um, by getting stuff like that. Okay, so try to focus on movies I have myself, ripping DVDs and stuff like that. So uh, you can go here and then you tell it which version you want. You do Raspberry Pi and it'll actually pop up and say guide and it'll send you here. There's three different kinds. The Libri uh, ELEC is kind of the, the, the main one that I've been using and it has its own software if you want to do it that way. If you already have a, um, a image burning uh, program you can do it that way too uh, but you can download it this way for Windows and it's all through their official uh, website here. Okay, You just kind of point out which one that you want and here's our Raspberry Pi 4. We click that and it'll pop up and gives us the image file to do. It's not a program, it's a new operating system for your um, for your Raspberry Pi. Okay. Okay, so that's a great project to do. Very easy to use. And one of the things you can do as well is is most of the time, I'll say most of the time. Uh, you won't have really have any issues. It kind of plays videos pretty rock solid um, for most the most part. Another thing that's really cool is uh, if you have it plugged in and your TV supports CEC, uh, you may not have to have us go buy a separate USB remote or even control the Raspberry Pi with a mouse because you may be able to control the TV through a remote, okay, through CEC. Uh, connection okay so that's what I do I have two TVs and it works pretty well recently I have had it have a, a hiccup where it thinks I'm double tapping so recently I did have to plug a mouse in um, but it is a Raspberry Pi 4 so there may be some glitches and I may have to reinstall the software again now if you do or if you do ripping uh, movies at home uh, one way that you can do to organize these makes it very easy instead of it just going and searching online is I've got me make sure I get the right website here tiny before I recommend it tiny there it is is that it yeah this is it so this is tiny uh, media manager and and So this is tinymediamanager.org. Uh, it's a great organizer. One of the things it can do is once you put like movies and stuff on your hard drive, you can actually tell it to scan them. It'll notice what it is. It'll search for picture art so that your Cody will have a really nice posters and it'll have a really nice listing description of the movies and stuff like that, okay? So it makes it very easy and uh, pretty fun TV shows, all kinds of stuff. And you're in a lot of control uh, of, of the uh, process instead of uh, Cody randomly connect to the internet and downloading something that it thinks that that's what it is using the scraper. You can use the scraper, control it, edit it, and then you tell it to save it uh, to the same folder as the video and it'll stay with it, okay? So it makes uh, it run a little bit faster too. So. I've been using this for a while. It works really, really well. Okay, so we talked about uh, game stuff. Talked about this. Another thing is that you can actually uh, build something like a arcade machine and use Re uh, RetroPie. Uh, there's other software too. RetroPie is the main one that I've used in the past. Uh, and you can run arcade uh, game stuff too, which is pretty fun and you know just kind of play around with it and see what you can learn see what you can do and that's one thing that's great about the Raspberry Pi it allows us to do projects learn uh, work on stuff do a little bit of basic coding too and troubleshooting too which is a good learning experience alright so we're starting to kind of come to the end of class here 
So does anybody have any other questions? Any other questions? <laughs> you could do cardboard to make arcade machines as well which is pretty fun or at least use it to do like a mock-up um, I've actually built one of those which is a lot of fun and it's a great project many websites have the instructions on there and you can basically get the parts uh, for it and it's just a little bit it's it's fun have an old, old arcade um, you know have an old uh, computer memory card excuse me have an old <laughs> uh, computer uh, screen you can do that uh, you know and then you can cut it out with some of the different instructions out there um, and then add it. One thing about the uh, Razer Pi software for RetroPie is you really need to have a start and a coin button. I actually was um, uh, came into uh, owning a one that someone had made but it was empty but it only had one button so I'm still in the process of I had to get a, a, a drill bit to drill a new hole because RetroPie does want it to have two buttons, uh, a start and a coin button, okay? And one of the ways that you exit RetroPie is you actually hold down start and uh, start and coin at the same time, and that'll get you back to the menu. So it's a great fun project. Family can really work on this too, and it goes kind of beyond what projects we, you know, we've kind of talked about. And, uh, I don't know give you some good ideas and stuff like I said the Razer Pi website has tons of great little projects and stuff with the little gadgets and everything they've even hooked up with um, Minecraft a little bit and of course programming and playing games with scratch and stuff so there you go photo booth Santa detector all kinds of fun stuff Dance party, piano, all seeing pie, a touch screen, screen, and there's a temperature log. So if you do get, and I do believe that, I'm not sure, I can't show it to you right in a second, but the new, the new uh, kit of gauges or gadgets and stuff I got, I do believe there's a temperature one in there, and I ha didn't actually have one before. So I could actually try this project uh, with that just to kind of keep track of temperature sensing, uh, sensing projects. Okay. So lots of great stuff. In this handout, I do have a little bit of extra. Um, if you have enough LEDs, you can do uh, more than just one uh, LED. Okay, you could actually go in and program it to be different GPIO. Now, the interesting part about this is, and I do know the Raspberry Pi, uh, this is on their website too. It'll talk about if you do have a red, uh, green, and yellow or amber one, you could do a stoplight. So try to figure out how to program that with your wires. Stop, go, and I have most of the sequence here discussing and talking about it. And the, you see, the code gets a little bit long, but it's still not undoable, okay? You can still actually complete it, okay? So let me know about what other projects you're working on. Like I said, I know we have covered a ton of stuff, um, but do realize we do do all this as an all-day class, and this is just kind of a brief overview to kind of get you started, give you some ideas, 
um, kind of let you know about some of the pitfalls that that I've had a few issues with um, best thing is make sure that you get a good power supply for your little Raspberry Pi it'll make it last longer and you know you don't want to overclock it too much for too long because it can fry it um, but some people will get big into overclock but make sure it's cool so that's a big one if you do get into overclocking it make sure it has a nice fan and you're keeping it cool okay so keep it cool all right so we've covered a lot today we talked about making it a media player making a reaction time game making a music box making an arcade machine fun okay all kinds of great stuff so any any final questions let's see All right, so here's a good list. I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about some of our other classes that we have coming up. So here's a list of our classes that we have been doing. This is officially our last class of July. Woohoo! So we covered a lot of things in July, didn't we? <laughs> Photography basics, fundamentals, uh, eBay, Marketplace, Facebook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, cord cutting, chess, scratch so all these uh, videos are actually still available and up uh, during this month we did a transition to this YouTube channel the GCHRL videos channel so make sure that you like and subscribe to that video this is where most of our videos will be posted we'll be posting here and we'll also be posting links to our videos on our main uh, web uh, library websites as well Facebook pages as well so if you want to keep in contact, uh, follow or like our library Facebook pages, the Evans Library page, the Harlem Library page, and the Grovetown Library page, and you'll get update when they post uh, their videos, and then when I post a video, I'll post a link there as well. Here's our upcoming classes for next, mo next month. Whoop, I don't know what I just clicked on. Upcoming classes for next month, okay. In August, we're going to be doing in the fourth. Like I said, we've got two new classes I'm going to do. We're going to do Scratch to Python, Blocks to Coding class. I just finished getting a certificate uh, for that class. And why is the bottom cut off? I don't know why the bottom's cut off, but I'll have to fix that. Oh, that's what it is. No. Okay, I don't know. Now this doesn't want to disappear for some reason. <laughs> okay. But anyway, it's cutting it off. So coming up and then on Wednesday, we're going to be doing birding, which is awesome. And we also have a new class, Video Creating Basics. So we're going to be using Windows 10 um, uh, Video Editor. And we'll be making a video, uh, editing a video, excuse me, editing slideshow, creating a video, adding, uh, using their templates that are listed on there. We're also going to be adding 3D effects and some uh, kind of movie effects on there as well. So that should be a lot of fun. It's kind of an addition to our uh, video class that we have. We talk about it briefly, but this, this class we're gonna go dive full into it and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Video editing basics. And of course it comes with Windows, so it is completely free. Yay. We're also going to do a Google School, Google Suite next week and also library resources and apps and then we'll be doing birding again on the 13th birding and the birding on the 5th hope you come for that uh, originally this is a class that we would do at the library we talk about uh, bird watching uh, spotting birds and then we go outside and find the birds but we've had to augment that so I have personal videos of my birds seeing birds different places and also um, uh, other videos from YouTubers uh, from showing different videos there as well. So we'll be talking about internet safety, Windows 10, browsers, and I'll be doing gadget help at the end of the month as well. Okay, so definitely come out for that.
will come out virtually for that. <laughs> Our libraries are open with limited services and hours. So, um, and also curbside holds pickup is available. For more details, go to gchrl.org. Or of course, you can call into the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Also, please don't forget to like our Facebook pages for updates and also uh, like our my video here on YouTube and also subscribe to our videos. And we're happy to see you in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this class. And I've got lots of little gadgets here to play with, LCD screens. We'll maybe use this in the future class. Let me turn the volume up. Hopefully my volume will be able to go to 11. Why don't amps all go to 11 already? I don't know. This also gives power here, so that's actually pretty exciting. Okay, so a project can be powered. Raspberry Pi and all kinds of good stuff. So thank you for coming. Have a wonderful Thursday. Have a wonderful Friday and also have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for hanging out with me. Hope you're safe and uh, I will see you again uh, at the library or I'll see you virtually. Okay? Have a great day. <laughs> so I will say bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>